So, the new Priest album is finally here, and it's awesome. So hello everybody and welcome to a new video and welcome to my channel where we talk about everything music from death metal to queen and everything in between. So, the new album by the Metal Gods is finally out, and it's awesome. The album is called Invincible Shield, and it's their 19th studio album to be recorded. That is amazing. Can you imagine that, recording 19 albums? That's definitely something not a lot of bands can say, especially metal bands. So yeah, kudos to Priest. Anyway, Invincible Shield. Okay, so there's two versions to this album. There's a deluxe extended version and the regular standard version, which is the one I'm actually going to talk about today. And this version, the original version, actually features 52 minutes and 32 seconds of awesome. First of all, the production quality and the sound quality on this album is amazing. It's ridiculous. I actually love the sounds of the drums on this album. In a day and age where the drums sound overprocessed and very compressed on nearly every album that's out there i actually love the sounds of the drums on this album they actually do sound natural they do have some distortion and stuff like that they are compressed but they're not over compressed they're not oversaturated either and the times you do hear some distortion on the snare and stuff like that it's actually added for effect and it works perfectly so big shout out to andy sneep who did an amazing job on this album the production is top notch no complaints at all i also love the fact that this album is very layered there's a lot of arrangements and subtleties that we're actually going to learn to appreciate as we listen to the album more and more that makes for a more complex and dynamic album that we will not get bored of very quickly this is definitely an album that is going to grow on us now that being said on this album they actually tried out some very different things from the previous albums but they do have very great influences from their previous albums. There's a lot of 70s riffage, there's a lot of Defenders of the Faith influences on this album, there's a lot of Screaming for Vengeance, there's a lot of 70s riffage, there's even some Turbo influences on it, but there's a lot and a lot of Painkiller on it. Painkiller is one of my all-time favorite albums, so no complaints here. Now, based on my first couple of listens of the album, it can be a little front-loaded because the faster and heavier songs are in the beginning of the album, but I can't rule out side B of the album or the last five or six songs. Even the songs I like the least on this album are pretty good songs and I can definitely see myself liking those songs a lot more as we go along and as I listen to them more and more. Unlike what I said after listening to 72 Seasons by Metallica for the first time around, I actually see a lot of potential on this album and I see it maturing a lot better than I did that album. I think I'm gonna listen to this album a lot more than I did 72 Seasons. Okay, so without further ado, let's talk about all of the songs and let's talk a little bit about each of the songs. The album's opener is Panic Attack and we've actually heard this song before because they actually released it as a single. It starts out with a fade in and it builds up into the song and it's definitely a throwback to the 80s. It's got some Phil Collins influenced drums and a lot of synths that actually fade into the song along with an electric guitar that build up to that awesome intro. Now this song, as 80s as it actually feels, it takes me right back to Painkiller. The vocal harmonies, the song structure, the triplets before the guitar solo. The solo itself actually sounds a lot like Painkiller meets Randy Rhodes, which I love. Two of my biggest influences as a guitar player in one solo. So yeah, killer track, an awesome opener to an awesome album. Now the second track, The Serpent and the King, actually gets faster and more 80s. Total free will burning vibes on this. It's got a lot of simple but effective key changes that really keep you hooked to the song. And we get another nod at Painkiller the song before and during the guitar solo. That beginning of the guitar solo sounds a lot like KK Downing's guitar solo on Painkiller. You know, the second solo, you know, with the sweep and the whammy bar, it's just awesome. And get a load of the bass drum six tuplets at the end of the song awesome stuff. Now for track number three you actually expect them to ease up on you but they don't. They actually double down and they start out the title track to this album on a 5 over 4 key signature riff and there's some cool syncopated drumming on this intro as well and then it actually speeds up and it becomes kind of another fast song on the album. But there's a lot of different arrangements and accents on the song that really keep you interested. Now this might actually be the most progressive song on this album but don't get me wrong it's still an aggressive priest awesome song and it's got a really cool intricate guitar solo and a lot of awesome harmonized melodies. Now for song number four, Devil in Disguise, we actually slow down a bit which is a welcome change of pace and we actually get more of a groovy song. There's a very cool chorus buildup, and we get more of a bluesier guitar solo on this song. Now the chorus on this song reminds me a lot 
of the chorus on the song Patient Number no. 9 by Ozzy Osbourne and it's really hard for me to shake that off. So that kind of bumps me out a little bit even though I do like that song and I do like this song but I just can't shake that. I mean it might just be me. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And do keep an eye out for one of my favorite drum fills on the entire album at the end of this song. And thus we get to song number 5 which is Gates of Hell. Now this song is a little bit faster than Devil in Disguise but it's not a fast song at all. The verse riff actually reminds me a lot of the verse riff in Rock Hard Ride Free. And that's actually kind of cool. It's a very long throwback, but that's awesome. This is definitely a more 80s sing-along kind of song. I can definitely picture people just chanting along to the song during the concert. But to me, it might actually be one of my least favorite songs on the album. Now, song number six, however, might be the opposite. Crown of Horns, the sixth track on this album, actually surprised me a lot as soon as I heard it for the first time. It's like Judas Priest out of their comfort zone, but they're doing it awesomely. You get this very proggy influenced guitar hammer on lead that leads into a melodic intro on this beautiful metal ballad. I mean it's not really a straight ballad like Angel or Beyond the Realms of Death or even Prisoner of the Eyes which are awesome ballads, awesome songs too, which I sort of expect on any Priest album but you know it's as close as it gets to it and it's got a damn near perfect guitar solo for it. I love this song, it's a gorgeous song and it's the only song on the album to actually fade out to black. I mean that might actually not even matter to anybody but Pat but I just found it interesting. Now the next song on this album, Lucky Number 7, is as God as my witness. A leather rebel! Another nod at the Painkiller album. Just listen to that riff and the overall feel, frantic, fast double bass drum, definitely a banger and it's got a very catchy chorus. Now on track number 9, Escape from Reality, we get a lot of heavy, doomy, Sabbath vibes here. It's got a bit of touch of evil riffage on it and the bass guitar actually takes front and center for a change. OMG! It's subtle and it's short and it's just a little bit but it's a welcome addition to the album. There's also a crazy vocal chorus there. Now we got to the penultimate song on the album, song number 10, Sons of Thunder. And like I said on the beginning of the album, the album feels a little front loaded. This is where I start to lose interest on the album. This is where I start to get a little saturated and a little tired of the album. Mind you, we're already at like 45 minutes into the album so that's not bad. A perfect album length for me should be anywhere from like 42 minutes to like 49 minutes and that's even pushing it. A little bit but I found that albums that are longer than that feel a little bit harder for me to digest. I also dislike the fact that you know when an album it's a little bit too long we actually get a second disc, we actually get two LPs and we end up getting really short periods of music for side A and side B and side C and side D. So it feels like you have to flip over the album constantly and I dislike that. That's why I actually prefer CDs. I just pop it in, hit play, let it rip and that's also why I dislike bonus tracks on CDs, especially when they add nothing to the album. Like when they have different remixes for the songs or like demo versions of the songs or live versions of the songs. And don't get me started on Judas Priest albums that actually have songs from a different album live as bonus tracks. That makes no sense. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. Song number 10, Sons of Thunder, actually feels like another 80s influence fist pumping song, but nothing too special here in comparison to the rest of the album. It's actually the shortest song on the album at 2 minutes and 59 seconds and I do appreciate that. And thus we get to the last song on this album, song number 11, Giants in the Sky. But before we get to that, if you got this far then I assume you'll actually enjoy the video so please drop me a like, drop me a comment in the comment section down below, let me know what you think of this album. Also don't forget to subscribe to this channel like a man if you haven't yet. And if you enjoy the content, you love metal and you want to help support the channel big time, please consider becoming a patron to the channel. A little goes a long way and we surely do appreciate it. Alright so the last song on the album, nothing spectacular here for me. Wait for it. Until we get to the interlude. You haven't heard it yet? Oh man, you're missing out. A little bit over halfway through the song, there's a very awesome, beautiful, clean and acoustic guitar interlude that just takes the song to another level. To me, it actually takes it all the way from meh to almost masterpiece. And I might be overselling this a little bit because of the fact that there's nothing really technical about it and it's not like over the top and super complex, but it's definitely an unexpected twist. And it actually feels like the interlude on a song like Diary of a Madman where it just completely changes the song but it adds to the song, it doesn't take you away from the song, it just adds to it before going back to the final choruses and wrapping up this awesome album. 11 great songs, Pat approves big time. Do I love every song off of this album? You've heard me before, I don't. But even the songs I don't love the most have enough depth 
and subtleties, which lead me to believe that they might actually grow on me as I listen to them and appreciate them more. Anyway, guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please drop me a like if you did. Drop me a comment in the comment section down below. And if you've got a minute or two, please check out one of these two videos. I'll see you guys next time. Pat out, metal on, dudes.